Hi guys, it's me, Katie from Cracked, the YouTube page you're currently on. Some of you may remember a video I released about pita. No, I do not mean the delicious unleavened bread, which is a staple of Mediterranean cuisine. I am talking about the not so secret and arguably evil activist group, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Yes, some of you may remember that, but for the rest of you, don't bother doing a search because it no longer exists. The reason the video no longer exists is because a few days after we posted it, Cracked was contacted by PETA's lawyers with a cease and desist. They demanded that Cracked.com immediately cease and desist from making false and defamatory statements about PETA, and that PETA demands the immediate retraction of the video from any and all publication platforms, and a written apology. Please govern yourself accordingly. They also called it a hit piece, which honestly, was flattering. I mean, 300,000 views isn't bad, but I wouldn't quite call it a hit, you know? So I was asked to compile all my sources, and not only did they continue to support my thesis that PETA is the f***ing worst, but I also noticed that threatening litigation against people who tell the truth is just another terrible thing that PETA regularly does. Douglas Anthony Cooper from the Huffington Post, for example, states that people are routinely threatened by PETA's lawyers, but nobody has been sued for repeating this for good reason. PETA would have a very bad day in court. Which upsets me, you know? You can't bully people into being silent. So we decided to take that video down and make a new one. But this time, we would ask PETA to comment. Which brings us to today, where I am re-explaining all of the truly terrible things you didn't know you should know about PETA. Again, not the bread. I promise I won't keep doing this bit. I can sense it's getting a bit stale. Number one, they claim to be the champions of the animal kingdom, but in reality, they're more like the Chucky of the animal kingdom. Okay, we already went through all of this in the original video that no longer exists, but like this stuff is really important, so let's just quickly recap. PETA euthanizes 90% of the animals that come through their doors, even healthy, young, adoptable animals. There are innumerable accounts of animals being dropped off with the promise of finding new homes, but instead, they were immediately killed. In fact, PETA is against no-kill shelter. And according to ex-PETA employees, they would sometimes steal pets to be euthanized. Take this account from Heather Harper Trohe, who stated in an interview with the Huffington Post that while stolen animals were the minority, it was an acceptable practice, that it was standard operating procedure, and that stolen animals would not be rehomed because they leave a trail. In their original cease and desist, PETA states that this report is false, that it comes from a disgruntled former employee who worked for PETA before it operated any shelter and has no knowledge of the incident. But that is actually false, because in her interview, Ms. Harper Trohe describes the bleak conditions of PETA's shelters and says that Ingrid Newkirk herself encouraged daily doctoring of logs to conceal how many animals they killed. Now, why the heck would an organization that claims to support the ethical treatment of animals do all of this? Because PETA does not believe humans should own pets. Now, obviously, that is a somewhat dramatic statement. I'm pretty sure it's called hyperbole, only like the best word ever. Obviously, PETA employees have pets, but since there are animal overpopulations, PETA's official stance is that mercy killing is better than living in a shelter. In their letter to us, PETA's lawyers defended the organization by saying that every owner who brings in an animal to PETA signs a form transferring ownership and acknowledging that the animal may be euthanized. Which is besides the point. Telling people their animal may be euthanized is very different from telling them that they most likely will be euthanized. Number two, they support animal activism. Did I say activism? <laughs> Sorry, I meant terrorism. And I mean that literally. They have literally paid the legal fees for members of known domestic terrorist organizations such as the ELF and ALF. PETA representatives have been quoted saying, blowing stuff up and smashing windows. I think it's a, a great way to bring about animal liberation. And at one point, the FBI was even monitoring their activity. And according to this report from the Department of Justice, the FBI concluded that PETA does provide what can be considered at least tacit support for the animal Liberation Front and its illegal activity, and that several leading PETA members had expressed support for ALF activities and refused to condemn them. The report also says it was believed that PETA was involved in target selection for past ALF ELF attacks, and that PETA was alleged to have established a faction within PETA to support ALF ELF activities and or cells. Again, this is from the Department of Justice talking about secret terrorist cells. Now, obviously PETA's lawyers 
anticipated this. In their letter, they said, your claim that PETA supports terrorism is similarly false and defamatory and must be immediately retracted. And to say that PETA supports terrorism and has been investigated by the FBI for terrorism is an astounding claim. Which is funny because PETA General Counsel Jeff Kerr himself, CC'd on these emails they keep sending me, is actually quoted in this Washington Post article about how the FBI was investigating PETA. <laughs> See? Isn't that funny? Classic Jeff. Number three, they are against any industry using animals or animal products. Which, okay, I understand that to a degree. I myself am a vegetarian and I totally respect the vegan lifestyle. But for an organization that euthanizes the majority of animals coming through their doors and routinely disposes of their bodies in dumpsters, I don't know, it just kinda seems hypocritical. Also, let's be real. A world without any animal testing is a world without vaccines, or cancer treatment, or deodorant. I'm not sure that's a world I'm ready to live in. They claim to spread truth and awareness. But in actuality, they rely on bullying and misinformation to spread their message. You know what, I actually, I think I said it's best the first time around, so I'm just gonna let us keep watching that. PETA has frequently come under fire for their aggressive ad campaigns, including the one famously comparing meat eaters to Nazis, which frankly confuses me since their shelters could easily be compared to a death camp. I said it. Not to mention this ad where they straight up lie, stating that eating dairy is linked to autism. While I do understand the desire to create an aggressive, attention-grabbing campaign, maybe spreading lies and shame isn't the best way to get people on your team. Did you, uh, did you catch that Trump reference? Good, because it feels more pertinent now than ever. You cannot bully people into believing a distorted version of the truth. You cannot use litigation to hide injustice. And we cannot accept this from politicians, from corporations, or from nonprofits, apparently. It's just like, it's just, it's so frustrating, you know? Because like, okay, if PETA had animals' best interests at heart, it seems like they could spend their massive budget on good things like ad campaigns, promoting adoption, or lobby to push legislation through that saves animals instead of legislation that saves kill shelters. What about it, PETA? I know you're watching. What about doing that instead? True to my word, I reached out to them for comment on all of these points, and this is what they wrote back. If you were approaching us with a desire to learn about PETA's work to help animals versus just seeking to smear PETA, we'd be happy to answer your questions. It is, however, abundantly clear based on your most recent emails that this is a hatchet job and that you have not reviewed any of the information about PETA's work that I sent to you and which is available at www.petasaves.com. On the contrary, I did did review the information, and none of it answers my questions, which is why I made the video in the first place. Look, if you agree with PETA's philosophical point of view and these facts don't bother you, well then okay, I guess continue to support them. But my point is that most people who donate to PETA do not know where their money is actually going, and that is a problem. But now that you know the truth, please take that information and do whatever you want with it. I don't know. Maybe share this video a ton. I don't know. Who cares? Personally, I encourage you to donate to more trustworthy organizations like the Wildlife Conservation Society or the American Humane Association. But hey, to each their own. Real quick, why'd the chicken cross the road? To get away from PETA. <laughs> Why did the cat climb the tree? To get away from PETA. <laughs> okay, okay, one more, one more, one more, okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. Oh, please don't send me to PETA! <laughs> hey, thank you so much for watching that video. Do me a favor, click the C to subscribe, click one of these videos on the left to watch more great content, and click the little bell to be alerted when we've got more videos.